Central Baptist Church welcomes you to the Central Message. Over the next few minutes, you're going to experience worship and preaching unlike the traditional and beyond the ordinary. Hello, I'm Ron Phillips. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Come join our spiritual family as we worship in the freedom only Christ can give. And now, from the Central Baptist Church in Chattanooga, Tennessee, the Central Message. Take your Bible and turn to Luke chapter 17, please. Luke chapter 17 and verse 26 and 27. I begin a series of messages that we're airing nationally and internationally called The Stones Cry Out. We're going to be looking at prophetic scriptures that relate to the second coming of Jesus Christ as we begin this new millennium. And we're going to be looking at some remarkable discoveries that have been hidden, that are still being hidden, that uh, are being fought, the release of the information that I'm going to be sharing over the next four weeks. Uh, Many people have suffered because of trying to get the truth out to the people of God. Tonight the message is as it was in the days of Noah. Look at Luke 17, 26. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. I was sitting in a university classroom, a Baptist university classroom. We had a visiting professor of Old Testament archaeology in the classroom. He said to us all, Noah's ark is a myth. There may have been a person named Noah who had a small boat on which he and some livestock survived some little small local flood. The idea that a great universal flood took place is foolish. Well, I have lived some 31 years to read in the Washington Post, November of 99. Front page, the Washington Post, November 18th, cites the discovery of dramatic new evidence of a sudden catastrophic flood around 7,500 years ago. The possible source of the Old Testament story of Noah. (laughs) An undisturbed coastline 550 feet deep in the Black Sea was discovered by explorer Robert D. Ballard. The Post recounted and scientists have determined that fresh water mola subsequently dredged from the ancient beach date back 7,500 years. Ballard said the discovery proves the existence of a flood between this 600-year gap. What we wanted to do is prove to ourselves it was the biblical flood. Robert Ballard was the man who found the Titanic. The Black Sea today is salt water. What they found was freshwater beach down underneath there proving the universal flood just like the Word of God says. Let God be true and every man a liar. I want to go on to announce to you that I am convinced that Noah's Ark has been discovered. I believe that the late Ronald Wyatt didn't just make the discovery, but was the first one to release the discovery to the world as we know it. In September 1960, Life magazine printed an aerial reconnaissance photo of an ark-shaped object 20 miles south of Mount Ararat. A small group of explorers located the site at around 7,000 feet. Their two-day search revealed it to be a man-made object in the neighborhood of 500 feet long. Now, what scientists tell us is if you take the Hebrew cubit or the Royal Egyptian cubit, you come to a size of a ship somewhere between 450 and 515 feet long. This one fits the model exactly. They also found a stone, an ancient stone house with eight graves. Could these have been the graves of Noah and his eight people that were in the ark? The same distance uh, from the house, they found a 12 foot by 12 foot by 12 foot altar dating back to the time of Noah. In 1977, 
Ron White saw it for the first time. He returned in 1979 to the site and discovered that an earthquake had actually lowered and excavated and allowed the ark to sit up higher than it had ever been before. He made numbers of trips and brought samples back to prove that this was petrified wood. They took metal detectors and found exact spacing of iron between the ribs of the boat. In 85, it was scanned by radar with spectacular results. This was reported on 2020 and in the London Telegraph. In 1987, complete scans were done and excitement began to build. But this all came to a halt in 1991 when Ron White and his team were jailed by terrorists and kept for three weeks because of what they were unfolding that proves the Word of God. Now, they appeared on the Today Show after that ordeal, and we have footage of that appearance on the Today Show. But you say, Brother Ron, why haven't we heard more? And why uh, haven't we seen the pictures? I'm going to tell you there's a conspiracy. You need to understand that most biblical archaeologists are liberals. They don't believe in Noah's Ark. They don't believe in the things of the Word of God. And this is sad for me to report to you, but it's just true. You take the opposition of what I call the intelligentsia of archaeology along with uh, the hatred of the Islamic for the Word of God then you have a tremendous difficulty in gaining access to these ancient sites. But believe it or not, they are there. And I want us to bring the lights down and just show you. We have much more that we, we've got on a CD that we haven't got ready to show you. But I want to show you a few things, if we may. The late Ron White is to your left. This is astronaut James Irwin, who's also an ark hunter, on his right. This is a picture of them at the site of Ararat in those days. Let's go to the next picture. If you look here to your right up on the hill, there's a little uh, building. Do you see it? That's a visitor center that a favorable government in Turkey built so that people could visit the ark. If you look down to your left, there is the, at the ark sitting there, my friend, the ruin of the ark. And you need to know that that is over 500 feet long that ark right there at the foot of Mount Ararat. How many of you see it? Here they are standing on the ark, having done radar surveys and marking off where wood and so forth ha it has been found. It is believed that the ark landed higher up. They have found the bottom of the ark uh, about four miles, uh, three or four miles up where the lava flow brought the ark to rest here uh, some 20 miles uh, at 7,000 feet in the mountains of Ararat. Let's have one more slide. These are the wooden ribs, petrified wood, uh, of the ark, Noah's ark. Right there is where those ribs were located that are petrified wood. And there's much more evidence that I don't have time to go into. It can be found on the internet, by the way, most of this uh, is where I found it and when I began to study this. But I wanted you to understand and see that Noah's Ark has been found. Why this discovery in our day? Why this discovery? Why have we found the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah in our day? Why has the Ark of the Covenant been found and yet not yet brought out? I'm going to be answering these questions in the messages that I'm teaching. Psalm 8511 makes this promise. Truth shall spring out of the earth. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. The reason for the ark coming to prominence in our day is that the ark itself and all of the truth that surrounds it pictures the last time the world came to an end. 600 generations had lived when God destroyed the world by water. And what happened in those days, Jesus said, would be exactly what would happen in our day. So it's not surprising. 
It's not surprising that in these last days, God would begin to break forth the archaeological evidence that underscores the veracity of the Word of God. I want you to know, friend, I believe this book to be true. I believe that it is historically accurate. When it says there was an ark, there was an ark. When it says there was a flood, there was a flood. And what it said about the past is true, and what it says about the future is true. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget that by the word of God, listen, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. God says it plainly that in the last days, there will be those who would mock the truth of Noah's ark. And isn't it just like God to let it show up to the embarrassment of the intelligentsia? What I didn't mention a moment ago was, on Ron White's first visit in 77, the ark was underground. And he said, how in the world are we ever going to get permission to excavate that thing? There was an earthquake in 1979, and the ground dropped around it where you can see it where it is today. God Almighty is at work. What did Jesus say? I quoted a moment ago. Jesus said in both Matthew and Luke, as it was in the days of Noah... As it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of Son of Man. Don't you understand? With liberal Bible scholarship and the intelligentsia mocking the existence of Noah, making fun of the ark, that to, for the words of Jesus to carry the impact, Jesus wanted to reveal here in the last days that what he said about the ark was true. As it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage to the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Right here you've seen photographic evidence and other evidence that I've shared with you. You've heard the story uh, from the Washington Post, not the National Enquirer, by the way, of, a, of confirmation of a universal flood. And I know some of you are still listening to Dr. Uh, Silly Whiskers and someone else over at the university telling you the Word of God isn't true. They're lecturing out of 30-year-old notes. They need to get up to date and find out what's going on today. Amen. Go ahead and clap. Don't pat a cake. Now, what are the days of Noah? In Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. Uh, we, verses 1 through 3, we find out that demons actually came and cohabited with women here on the earth. Those devils can't do that today because they've been chained under darkness. But because of the wickedness that came on the earth, the Lord said in Genesis 6, 3, My spirit shall not always strive with man for his flesh. And his days shall be no more than 120 years. There were giants in the earth. Those giants, I believe, were part devil and part man. And the Lord said in verse 5 of Genesis 6, The wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every intent of the thoughts of his heart were on evil continue. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved his heart. And he said, I'm going to destroy him. But Noah found grace in the eyes of of the Lord. And when you saw the picture of that big old 515 foot boat, and we don't know how deep the thing was. We've got those measurements, but that thing goes way down there. I want you to look at that thing and not see an archaeological ruin, but see grace. Noah found grace. What were the days of Noah? They were days of exploding population. They were days of great knowledge. They were days of extreme wickedness. And they were days of demonization. We find this to be true in Jude, Jude, verse 6. The angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he is reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of that great day. Prior to the flood, a, a race of men inhabited this earth that were part devil and part man. 
And God destroyed them all and he took those demons and he's reserved them under everlasting chains in judgment forever. But let me give you another thing. The primary sign of the days of Noah is that they were days of spiritual indifference. It says, Jesus said, in those days, they'll be eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. What's unusual about eating? What's unusual about drinking? It's not talking about liquor. It's just talking about drinking. You got to drink to live. Amen. They were married and getting in marriage. We got wedding. had a wedding here this weekend. I mean, it was business as usual. It didn't matter if there was a man down the street screaming that the world was coming to an end who had been building a boat where there wasn't any water for 120 years. Nobody paid any attention to him. I mean, they got used to it. And they began to live their lives as if Jesus Christ would never come again. They went their own way. They did their own thing. They followed their own pathway. And they could not hear the trumpeting and the warnings of the Word of God. And Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, I can just hear them laughing, can't you? I bet the children love to mock that old man. I bet the people, you see, there had never been a drop of rain fall on the earth. Are you listening to me? Never a drop of rain had fallen on the earth. The dew still watered the ground before the great flood shook everything up. There was that boat, laughing and scoffing and mocking, just like in our day. But one day, my friend, Noah and his family locked themselves in. The Bible says God shut the door. And when God shuts it, no man can open it. And the pitter pad of raindrops, as we heard over this weekend, began to hit and began to fall. And they didn't stop. And God also broke up the fountains of the deep. We don't understand everything that means. But God loosed the water resources that cover two-thirds of this planet. He loosed them. And terrible judgment swept over the face of the earth. Here's the way Hebrews 11 verse 7 says. By faith, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not yet seen. That's rain, that's water, that's flood. Being warned of things not as yet seen. Moved with godly fear and prepared an ark to the saving of his household. You saw it. And the saving of the human race. By which he condemned the world. And became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Now let me wrap this up, this brief presentation tonight. As it was in the days of Noah, there was a man named Enoch who lived before Noah. Say Enoch. Enoch had a son named Methuselah. Have you ever heard of Methuselah? What was the one distinction about Methuselah? He's the oldest man that ever lived. Was it 969 years he lived to be? Isn't that right? Do you know what his name means? According to the ancient Sanskrit that came into the Hebrew, Methuselah means when he is dead, it shall be sent. And Enoch had a boy whom God told him to name when he dies. I'm going to send it. And I believe it was talking about the flood. Because when the day Methuselah died, my friend, the rain started. You didn't know that, did you, some of you? Yet Enoch walked with God and was not. For God took him. I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. Somebody said, well, like the saints of the Old Testament, we're going to go through the flood. We're going to go through the tribulation. Jews are. But I'm like Enoch. I'm going out. You wonder why Enoch walked with God? He walked with God because he had a boy that was a sermon. He had a son that, that if he died at six months, the judgment was coming. If he died a year old, the judgment was coming. And he looked at that boy every day and he said, judgment's coming. I got to walk with God. You don't believe God's merciful. That's why he let old Methuselah live so long. 
He let him live long because he's long-suffering. The longest a man ever lived. He let him live so that people would have time to repent. Oh, my friend, there's a greater than the ark and a greater than Noah. His name's Jesus. And I want you to know you can find your safety in, in, in him today. The word of God is true from Genesis to Revelation. And right now, if you've never trusted him as your personal savior, you can run in to the ark of safety and put your life and your heart and your trust in him. You're watching me on my television. I've just given you a little bit. You need to stay with me for this whole series. But if you're lost without Jesus and somebody's told you the Bible's full of errors, the Bible's not true, my friend, that's a lie. The Word of God is true. It's true about you. And the good thing is, it's true when it says God loves you and wants to save you. And He will. He'll save you if you'll let Him. And I want to hear from you if you're trusting Him today or if you need help in knowing Him. He'll do it right now. Why don't you say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry I haven't believed. But right now, I do believe. And I want you to change my life forever. I want to be safe in your arms when this last judgment comes. In your name I pray. Amen. Aren't these discoveries astounding? The archaeological spade is uncovering these artifacts and showing us that every page of the Bible is true. Visually and audibly, you are hearing and seeing the truth of God's Word come alive. Noah's Ark has been found. The route of the Exodus has been discovered. Mount Sinai is in Saudi Arabia, not in Israel as we thought. And the Ark of the Covenant has been discovered. Thank you for ordering from The Central Message. We hope this tape has encouraged you in your spiritual walk. To receive additional copies or for information on other resource materials available from The Central Message, write to Ron Phillips, P.O. Box 937, Hickson, Tennessee, 37343. Or give us a call at 1-800-877-6493. And be sure to visit us on the web. Our address is www.ronphillips.org. The Central Message is an international broadcast ministry of the Central Baptist Church of Hickson in Chattanooga, Tennessee.